Judge uh, Swordsman here. It's June 2nd, 2022. Uh, interesting day today. Commodities are ripping overall. Uh, copper is up a whooping 5.13%. And uh, markets were actually down quite a bit earlier today. And, and still, most of the metals uh, here at least were, were in the green. And even oil actually now has rebounded. But so we're, we're seeing a bit and dollar of course, uh, not of course, but dollar is uh, has been going down today, which typically helps commodities. Uh, so I, I think it's, I mean, interesting to see that, okay, you have sell off in the markets, but now it seems that you don't see the typical panic selling or collateral selling margin calls or what have you in the, you know, precious metals, for example. and and. Silver and gold pretty strong today. Uh, crypto more interestingly, okay, it's starting to climb now a bit, but uh, but that's also one thing that I find interesting lately is that I mean typically I've seen cryptos go down with the Nasdaq and and the broader markets, and when they've turned higher, crypto has joined it. Uh, last two days or so, maybe three. It seems that crypto's actually dislocated a bit, so it's actually been going down when the markets are up and uh, join them when the markets are going down. So it's basically has looked like it's akin to, you know, heads you win, tails I lose, which the metals have suffered for that when market sold off metal sold off paper mark uh, paper metals sold off but when markets turned around higher uh, metals didn't really join so it's like they are correlated but only to the downside uh, anyway i i think today is you know another perfect example of uh, why uh, you can make a lot of money in this junior sector for example, I mean, and people might ask, okay, why do you say that? Because, I mean, there's a bunch of juniors that are uh, even, you know, down today and some down a lot. But I, I think that's just an example of why you can make a lot of money. Because, again, sentiment is so poor and the downtrend has been so firm for one and a half years. I mean, we've seen worse downtrends, so it's not like this is the first ever, even though it feels like that. Uh, every time and especially for the ones who got in near the top so this might be if you're still in this sector this might be your first real uh, correction so in that case yes it feels like nothing can turn these stocks higher and even when you have you know silver you know ripping last two days and gold going up you're not really seeing i mean first of all many of the juniors should already be up one to two hundred percent so it's like they they should not even need a reason to go up but when you see that they're also being sold uh, on a day when metals are up i think that just highlights the fact just how incredibly sentiment driven this junior sector is so you can throw away your textbooks of how the market should work the efficient market hypothesis etc it's totally useless in a sector like this uh, which you know took some time to really realize uh, again just how sentiment driven it is so I, I mean when you see stuff like today I'm looking at you know Montaro maybe it's up uh, last I checked it was actually up a bit but Montaro is down to or was down today to 0.115 dollars per share yeah 6.9 million market cap i think they have around at least four million dollars in cash still so that's an enterprise value of you know around three million canadian it's just mind-blowing i mean not big volumes of course but it's like that, that also highlights the point i was looking at some micro cap juniors and i was just checking like okay how much capital would be needed for these to you know plow 10 percent higher for example i mean typically it was uh, i didn't look at everyone obviously but you know many were i mean the the ask was so thin and the share price are so low that ten thousand dollars could move a lot of these stocks up 10 percent 
or even more in some cases. That's just incredible. I mean, again, it's like think about, and that's of course what we're supposed to be thinking that what cam comes after the rain, that's the sunshine. Uh, so just think about when this sector starts to seeing some inflow again and, and, and there's some appetite to buy. The, some of these juniors, they're going to make 50 to you know 100% moves in short order. There's not going to be much capital uh, needed to move these stocks higher. But in the meantime, again, they've been going down for almost one and a half years. Sentiment is still crap and you have a lot of problems in the rest of the world. And everybody is down on pretty much everything because the stock markets have rolled over and cryptos have crashed. So there's going to be a lot, what I think is happening now, a lot of selling for many reasons, totally, totally uh, regardless of, you know, the valuations, independent of valuations. People are going to sell because A, they need to raise money because they're losing on everything else. Two, people are fed up by the sector, so they're selling. And the longer they, people don't see an uptick or a trend up, they're going to be more inclined to sell, not buy, regardless of how cheap it is. Regardless that they told themselves, well, you should buy cheap and sell high. And they look back at, you know, every, every time they, the marginal investor buys in near a high, they're, they're looking back at, you know, the, the previous low and, and think like, oh, I, man, I, I wish I picked up that company at, you know, 10, 10 cents or 5 cents it's at 50 now but now i feel good because there's you know it's been an, in an uptrend for a year so it's obviously heading higher just in time for the next uh, you know sentiment higher come and we go in towards uh, like right now a one and a half year long uh, correction uh, so it's like i mean if if your strategy is to buy low sell high i mean it doesn't get more obvious than this there should be absolutely no confusion whether this sector and a bunch of juniors are cheap or not, are low or not. And of course, then there will always be people who, well, I think they'll go lower, so they sell. It's like, re regardless of how cheap something is, when it's at peak cheap, that means it's been uh, in the max amount of time in terms of a downtrend and the max amount of pain in terms of a paper loss. And of course, that's going to get just more and more people uh, to think that it's just going to keep on going lower. Otherwise, someone would have bought by then. So by definition, most amount of people will be convinced that it's never going to go up at the exact bottom. So the worse it gets, more people sell for irrational reasons and just the fact that they haven't gone up yet. While I'm sitting here, I watch, I, I've looked at a few tickers today, but it's like, this is an absolute no-brainer. I know this sector is ridiculously cheap, way cheaper than the 2015-16 bottom, even cheaper than the flash crash of 2020. I cannot ask for a more obvious buying environment. But since I cannot guarantee when they will head higher, you know, and, and that's what people typically do i mean they, they worry about the next day if they see a downtrend uh, you know it's going down today i'm i better not buy because then i think it's going to go down the next day and if these juniors had higher people get uh, more inclined to buy and maybe you know some junior goes up 20 percent, then they think this is the bottom so then they buy pay up 20 percent, then it falls 15 percent the next day and then they sell and think oh, okay this wasn't the bottom so you're just shopping yourself to oblivion basically trading away uh, when we have this what i would say bottom grind patterns they jump and then fall down jump fall down because there's still sellers out there and right now i mean again it's like montaro i mean silver is up 1.6 percent gold is up they have like i don't know four or five projects it's like this is no business being valued at 3 million us and you see insiders been buying some as well it's just absolutely ridiculous it's like yeah it's it's 3 million from being given away every project so basically 3 million away from uh pricing in a gold and silver price of zero it's it's just absurd so it's like yes it, this is a 
let's say a testing peer test, testing period i mean i i started i bought actually the first shares i think i bought around 40 cents or something i've joined two private placements and i've started buying in the open market because it just get, got lower and lower so i started buying i don't know exactly when but i think around here uh, that's october of last year so this is several months of going you know sideways to slightly down so then people are going to be more and more reluctant to throw in the towel while i'm sitting here it's like i don't care how long this takes because it's probably not going to take more than two years at least from this level for this to to somebody to sneeze at this stock and it you know jumps a hundred percent if they have any success whatsoever or sentiment changes that's that should be good if we go to a sentiment peak that's I mean, it was valued at 30, 40 million at the previous sentiment peak and the company was in worse shape back then because they didn't have the Golden Hill property. So it's the actual underlying value because it's more advanced and the risk than they have a, a really nice looking gold product. So it's the value is more than when the stock was trading at 55 cents. And now it's down to, you know, 11.5 cents. So value has gone up, price has gone down considerably. So it's like, if I'm, if I even pretend to be a value investor or you know a buy low, sell high kind of guy, it's like it's, it's a no-brainer. And it doesn't matter how long this is gonna take because if if we just you know a rule of thumb, okay, it's gonna go up to around fifty cent at the next sentiment high. How long could you wait for a return like that? You could wait years and it would still be worth it. But most people is like, yeah, it hasn't gone up yet. I've been sitting in this for six months or three months even. And people throw in the towel. It's like, yeah, well, you're, you're probably not going to have great returns because the longer a correction goes on, the closer we are to the next leg up by definition. And the cheaper it is, the higher the price to value gap is, obviously. So it's just get, you know, the buys get, uh, better uh, by a power of two while selling goes up uh, uh, in opposite direction goes ex becomes exponentially worse and that's still you know the the guy that sells the day of the bottom at the sh cheapest price after the longest correction that's the biggest mistake you can make and i i you know promise myself i'm never i'm i never i never sold sheep and i'm never gonna sell sheep Gold line, which I think is an interesting case, they raised money not too long ago, like let's say four million dollars. So okay, enterprise value of let's say four, yeah, four million Canadian. They picked up a project from I, I don't know if they they actually spent some money on the option from the Ognico, yeah, Ognico Eagle. But it's like, yeah, they have a gold project in Finland with a district scale land position. They got multiple projects in Sweden. And the project in Finland has like three, four hundred thousand ounces, obvious expiration upside, etc. etc. It's priced again like four million Canadian in enterprise value, somewhere along those lines. It doesn't matter if it's up ten or down ten percent. It's like splitting hairs. I mean everything is cheap within a range of like fifty percent at least. I mean, if it goes 50% up tomorrow, it's not. You can't really say it's expensive because the enterprise value would be, like, I don't know, eight million. Uh, so, so it's like this is a no-brainer environment. Sentiment is going to change, and will make the most amount of money the lower we can buy something, obviously. So as things go cheaper, and you see this kind of sell-off on a day like this, that just highlights the fact that. There's no rationality behind this because they shouldn't really be down here to start with the juniors and they're still going down even more when the value of their, you know, even though I don't think you should use silver and gold uh, daily swings as, I mean, what the company does is more important. But just to prove the point, because if you saw gold and silver down, for sure it's going to be sold off. But so you know the sentiment is so bad right now that even when the projects at face value go up because uh, metals are up, they are still being sold. And you cannot ask for, I mean, as a buyer, how, how can you ask for more than that? It's like, yes, literally at face value, no confusion about it. These projects are worth more and still I can buy them cheaper. 
it's just incredible it's like you know there's a there's a car you like and someone made an update to the car and and somebody would uh, uh, you know sell it at one price one day and then they made the updates to the car and then they uh, lowered the price while the car got just better more valuable it's like in in that kind of situation i think most people would actually at least be that you know clear-minded they would realize hey I, i'm getting an even better car today and i'm paying even less of course, that's a better buy than yesterday. And and then we have like Elora. I mean, tin is up today. At least last I checked, silver is up. Elora has a huge amount of silver and probably gonna have a lot more silver before this store is over. And and, and you still have again. It's like there's no reason why Elora shouldn't be green today. No reason at all. I haven't seen anything. And the story has just kept on getting better and better for months, basically. But you have this, you have this consolidation, big consolidation pattern. We've had consolidation patterns before. It's nothing about value of the company. It's all sentiment driven and traders and what have you. And, and what do I expect for Allure in the future? I mean, they won't need to raise money for, I don't know, six to 12 months or whatever. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of drilling and we're waiting for one of the deep holes that's going smack into a geophysics anomaly. I think it's one kilometer deep hole or long hole. Okay, so let's fast forward. They're just probably going to put out better and better news. This is going to grow and grow and they're working on a maiden resource, etc. It's like, yeah, do I think value is going to increase for sure? Do I think value has increased a lot? Yeah, and so does the analyst with price targets of like 8 to $16. And still today, Elora is down when metals are up. So it's like drop everything you think you know about the markets. Uh, just see it for what it is. E e such, uh, so much is just sentiment driven and the markets will be absolutely crazy at sentiment lows and tops. Crazy greedy at sentiment tops when you can see Jerry Baldy resources trade for $500 million without a single drill hole. And you can see like now great cases like I-80 Gold putting out some of the best drill holes I've ever seen in the junior space and they barely move. And you have juniors, micro cappers, they, they go down when gold is up. Those are the hallmarks of an irrationally fearful market or irrational uh, either way people are selling just for the sake of selling they don't even think about what comes next they don't even think about what they're selling is going to be valued at at the next sentiment hi that's our job if we, we want to beat the market we're betting against every moron that's selling sheep in all these micro caps and remember nine, 19 out of 20 people are morons so if, if, if the market is not agreeing with you, that's typically a good sign, especially at sentiment tops and bottoms. And typically at tops, they'll run a lot higher than you think is warranted. And they like we're seeing right now, they'll fall a lot more than is warranted. Story all this time. So at, when the next sentiment high comes, a lot of these juniors are going to go up hundreds of percent. That's why I'm so chill about it because it's like we're not, I mean, why would I care about the daily swings? Most I most cases I have or have a you know, I'm looking let's say six to 24 months ahead. What kind of value I expect they have, would have created over that time? Let's say I think that the average company I own will uh, go up. 200% in value over the next two years. Even if you have a very shitty market, that's that share price is still probably going to be higher. If we go into a really good market, those can be those stories could be up 500%. So what I mean when when I see people share, you know, because uh, they're up on a day that their portfolio is up 5%, what does that matter? I mean, is that your goal? That okay today i'm supposed to be up five percent and the journey is over no i mean we're not, we're in my opinion we're not even close to any type of sentiment or or 
average valuation that I would even consider selling anything un unless I find something even better, of course. So it's like it's it's uh, almost totally meaningless to be looking at, you know, be depressed if share prices down a d uh, on a day today or if it's up today. It's like if, if you're playing the the big return scenario, meaning that, OK, uh, I, I hope to be selling out at the next sentiment high. I mean, we might be six months from that, 12 months. 18 months, 24 months. So if, if your sole purpose is to buy sheep and sell when they're expensive, when they're up you know, hundreds of percent, why on earth would one care what the stock does on one day? Because it can go up today and go down the next day or down the next day and go up the day after that. No, no we're, we're, I'm, I'm at least playing the, the big moves, this uh, huge sentiment swings uh, coupled with the companies themselves drilling up even more value because if sentiment can take a lot of these juniors up 200 percent if they double the value of uh, uh, the underlying value of the company at the same time if they prove up double the amount of ounces i mean then you can take that 200 percent and multiply it by two so you have 400 percent in like you know one to two years yeah we're not even close to that pacific ridge they're going to be working five gold copper projects in British Columbia. We already have a discovery. I don't know if this is the actual, uh, uh, if there are more shares out. I think actually the share uh, market caps around 24 million or something. Still, I mean, that's nothing compared to what a, you know, solid copper gold porphyry in British Columbia uh, would be worth when copper is trading at $4.5 per pound. Gold at eighteen seventy dollars per pound. I mean, some of those in, the intercepts they had are like over one AU equivalent grams per ton over, I don't know, hundred hundred fifty meters or something. I mean, Jesus. And look at, I mean, look at the volume. Eight hundred seventy nine shares have traded for a sheep copper focused junior in British Columbia when copper is up five percent. Whatever they will prove out uh, in the if coming years, maybe at face value today, one of their, you know, what they will eventually have on uh, un, uh, non risk adjusted basis might have gone up 100 million in value today. On a risk adjusted basis, maybe 10 million. But that's, you know, that's still almost 50% of the market cap. So these, the, the market is absolutely retarded right now. It's absolutely sentiment driven, obviously, which I think I've, you know, again, proved my point today. So what, what is the rational conclusion? Okay, if the sector is irrationally fearful or whatever, these prices are irrationally cheap. And you always know that sentiment will always change. The most obvious conclusion one can draw is, of course, to buy as much as you can, the worse sentiment is and the cheaper something gets, because you will then sell when the opposite happens. That is the most like, you can even forget about price levels and price to value gaps or whatever, since Again, sentiment is so key. So we're playing the delta going from abysmal sentiment, everybody's selling, to everybody's buying. And the thing is, we don't know when. And that's what people typically almost need to know. It's like I've said this a bunch of times. I have no idea, haven't got a clue when I think the next sentiment high comes. I think that when it comes, I'll be up several hundred percent in my portfolio. And when the, uh, and if, in, if that's the case, which I think it is, then I would be happy to wait three years from now to have that kind of return. Because the overall market average is 8% per year. So if you do a 300% return in three years, you're going to beat everyone. But why doesn't everybody do that? That's because they're selling like they're selling right now and can't stomach it out. Or when it actually turns, they sell too quickly, let's say, which I tended to do.
Yeah, anyway, long rant. It's just, uh, hey man, hey man, uh, focus on other stuff. I mean, the, the whole point of being a, a growth hodler, growth investor, is that time is on our side because the we buy shares of companies we buy the labor of the management teams in companies and they don't take a break they just because gold is up or because gold is down or whatever no we constantly own a percentage of all their value creation skills so you could go on a vacation and it wouldn't matter wouldn't matter at all to your investment so it's like we're summer is pretty much here enjoy the summer don't don't look at tickers all day that's absolutely meaningless uh, again if if we if we have the just the clear cut goal of yes we're buying it and we're we're buying as long as it's cheap and we're going to sell when it get, becomes really expensive super easy decisions every, every almost everything is super cheap right now so it's like it's just a matter of, what is the cheapest? That's your only. It's like selling the sell button that's already been thrown away, you know, eight months ago. So all we can do, all we should do is basically buy when it's cheap, wait for it not to be cheap. So there's a lot of waiting in that. Because we're after, again, we're not after the day trades, we're after the big moves, we're after the multi-month to multi-year moves higher because a sentiment... Uh, high is probably not going to come too soon. I mean, from the crash of 2020 to the top, it actually was just, what, five months or so when GDXJ was up uh, 200%. So yes, that can happen, but we'll know when that happens. It will, of course, not be one day at least. So it's like, yeah, we're, we're look at the sentiment levels. I look at my proxies. We're not even close to a sentiment high. So we're, we have a lot of time to wait yet before our big payday comes and one might as well it's like i'm i'm you know trying to get in the best shape of my life uh, because i know it's certainly worth a lot more to let your strategy play out which means low maintenance because you're a growth hodler and since you don't need to time anything really so it's only waiting so might as well you know Get in shape, get educated in something, go play golf, go do whatever. You can basically, you know, live life while you're simply waiting to make the big bucks. Whereas uh, if you were a day trader, there's no time off. You're, you're not making any money unless you're, unless you're actively trading every single day. So you can't go on vacations because you have no trade working for you. Right now, our long game is that we buy now to sell at some date and we have no idea when, it got, when it's going to come. We don't know what, what path it's going to take. We just know that, yeah, okay, fast forward to whenever the next sentiment high is and we're going to be up a lot. That, that's a pretty simple strategy and very high ROI in terms of life because that means we can do a hell of a lot of other stuff in the meantime while our strategy pays off without us doing anything except le letting management do its thing and waiting for you know the idiots who are selling now to be buying back way higher later uh consider me biased i own shares probably of every company i mentioned uh uh i, I think many are sponsors as well eloro gold line montaro pacific ridge if i mention some other company you have to look up if if i am um, if that's a sponsor as well uh, make up, you know, make your own, up your own opinion. Uh, I'm describing how I think my strategy, and these are not investing recommendations. Uh, and uh, everything comes with risk. Never invest anything you don't, you can't stand to lose or will need anytime soon. Uh, because again, it's like if your strategy is dependent on timing, I, I, I think it's. Uh, it can have very detrimental effects because if, if you're forced to sell at a low, that just sucks. Okay, uh, bye and hit the like button if you like these videos. Thanks.